And that's wonderful. Thank you for joining us as we journey to Bethlehem for our Advent carol service this evening. A special thank you to the Reverend Dr. Munta Isaac, who is the pastor of the Lutheran Christmas Church in Bethlehem, and he is our host and our service leader this evening. But we come at a time of Advent, and we're going to start uh, just by, ad, uh, by lighting our Advent candles. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Munta. Hello. Good evening, friends. Good evening from Bethlehem, uh, the birthplace of Jesus Christ. I hope you can hear me uh, speaking from uh, outside of our church. Uh, which is really located at the heart of Bethlehem. It is 8.30 in the evening right now. Streets are empty. Uh, it's a bit chilly outside, a bit cold. Uh, this is what you see here is one of the lifeless, lively, less, lively uh, places in uh, uh, Bethlehem with a big market on every day. Of course, now it's closed. And as I move my camera here, this is the beginning of the old city. Uh, from the uh, western side. If you continue walking on this street, three more minutes, uh, you will get to the Church of the Nativity where Jesus was born. Uh, and right here is our Christmas uh, Lutheran Church, uh, our nice and beautiful sanctuary uh, from the 19th century, um, which is home to the uh, Evangelical Lutheran congregation uh, today. Uh, the only Protestant uh, church uh, in Bethlehem uh, today. Um, uh, it is my joy, and let me try to, uh, as we try to work out this technology, it is my joy to invite you, even if virtually, uh, to come to Bethlehem, uh, uh, to come, first of all, to encounter Jesus again. He's the same today, yesterday, uh, and tomorrow, and also to encounter the living stones uh, of Bethlehem. Uh, last year, when we met also virtually, we thought that the pandemic would be over, but hopefully next year it will be over and we will be able to meet uh, in person. I'm entering the church right now. Uh, this morning, we had our service, as always. Uh, this is a very lively congregation. I wish you could be with us on one morning. And I'm going to quickly uh, shift to the other camera. So welcome again to Bethlehem Christmas Lutheran Church. Welcome to Bethlehem. And it is so good that you can join us from your homes. Um, and here in Bethlehem, Christmas is a very, very busy season, a very lively season. Even today, we had a big parade uh, in the streets. Children were really overjoyed. It was a much needed uh, break from the, uh, uh, after a whole year or two years of being locked in the house with very few uh, events. The COVID situation is getting better. We thank God vaccination is now available. We're able to meet again uh, in closed places. We put on our masks, but in outside, uh, there is no need. Uh, with the many events that take place in Bethlehem, so many concerts, so many events, it is sometimes um, easy to forget that Jesus is the reason for all of this, that it is because of him uh, that we meet. So today I invite you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit as we open this worship to come to Bethlehem. Come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. We will sing the song in Arabic. You will hear the organ, but please in your rooms, feel free to sing along uh, in English as well. Come to Bethlehem. Come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord.
let us pray. And I will pray in Arabic and it will be followed by a prayer in English. Allahumma abana samawi inana nasta'id fi hadha al-waqt lil-ihtifal bi'eid milad ibnika al-habib lida nusalli ilayk an taj'alana nu'ayyid bil-hamdi wa al-shukr wa an tahilla baynana al-yawm huna fi bayt al-lahim wa aydan fi al-mamlaka al-muntahida an tahilla alayna bi-qudratika wa tamnahna quwa ruhiya jadida kay nutammim mashiatak ساعدنا يا رب وادخل قلوبنا واملأها من حبك كي نحصل على البركة التي وعدت بها الذين يطلبونك بإخلاص ويدعونك بالحق ويسمعون كلامك بخشوع هذا ما نطلبه بربنا يسوع المسيح الذي له معك ومع الروح القدس كل إكرام ومجد إلى الأبد آمين Loving God as this journey through Advent is almost over, and we contemplate your arrival in the world to live amongst us, we look to the change you bring and to the change you invite us to bring. Thank you for the gift of technology in our Zoom service, which unites those in the UK with our friends in the place of your birth in Bethlehem, Palestine. We remember that you were born at a time of occupation and oppression. We recognize that this is still the situation in Palestine today. And so we acknowledge the call for us to speak out against injustice and oppression wherever we find it. We give thanks for the witness and beacon of hope offered by the Christmas Lutheran Church and the Dar al Kalima school in Bethlehem, as they live out the call that the hungry might be fed and the humble lifted high. May they be held by the prayers and support offered from their friends beyond the wall which divides Bethlehem and Jerusalem. At this time of pandemic, we give thanks for those who care for us, who despite the pressures of yet another wave of infections, continue to serve selflessly. Thank you for the skill of scientists who have brought us new vaccines and treatments. May we learn to share these gifts as the connected world you hold us to be. And at this time when so much is unclear, may we look to you and trust in your guiding love. Forgive us for our uncertainties where we are afraid, give us courage. Where we are unsure, give us clarity. Where we are hesitant, give us determination. And help us to recognize and release the gifts in others. That our lives may reflect your love in the little things we do and in the ordinariness of who we are, so that we too may grow in your love in the knowledge that when we are truly repentant for the times when we've fallen short, may we know that we are forgiven. Let us share now in the prayer that you taught us, as I invite you to join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Amen. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who are against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the eternal of the evil and the Amen. Thank you, Munta. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, verses 26 to 58, 56, and I will be reading in Arabic. Please follow on your screen. وفي الشهر السادس أرسل جبرائيل الملاك من الله إلى مدينة من الجديد اسمها ناصر. 
إلى عذراء مخطوبة لرجل من بيت داود اسمه يوسف واسم العذراء مريم فدخل إليها الملاك وقال سلام لك أيتها المنعم عليها الرب معك مباركة أنت في النساء فلما رأته اضطربت من كلامه وفكرت ما عسى أن تكون هذه التحية فقال لها الملاك لا تخافي يا مريم لأنك قد وجدت نعمة عند الله وها أنت ستحملين وتلدين ابنا وتسمينه يسوع هذا يكون عظيما وابن العلي يدعى ويعطيه الرب الإله كرسي داود أبيه ويملك على بيت يعقوب إلى الأبد ولا يكون لملكه نهاية فقالت مريم للملاك كيف يكون هذا وأنا لست أعرف رجلا فأجاب الملاك وقال لها الروح القدس يحل عليك وقوة العلي تظللك فلذلك أيضا القدوس المولود منك يدعى ابن الله وهو ذا الإصابات نسيبتك هي أيضا حبلى بابن في شيخوختها وهذا هو الشهر السادس لتلك المدعوة عاقرا لأنه ليس شيء غير ممكن لدى الله فقالت مريم هو ذا أنا أمة الرب ليكن لي كقولك فمضى من عندها الملاك فقالت مريم في تلك الأيام وذهبت بسرعة إلى الجبال إلى مدينة يهودا ودخلت بيت زكريا وسلمت على أليصابات فلما سمعت أليصابات سلام مريم ارتقض الجنين في بطنها وامتلأت أليصابات من الروح القدس وصرخت بصوت عظيم وقالت مباركة أنت في النساء ومباركة هي ثمرة بطنك فمن أين لي هذا أن تأتي أم ربي إلي فهو ذا حين صار صوت سلامك في أذني ارتقض الجنين بابتهاج في بطني فطوبى للتي آمنت أن يتم ما قيل لها من قبل الرب فقالت مريم تعظم نفس الرب وتبتهج روحي بالله مخلصي لأنه نظر إلى اتضاع أمته فهو ذا منذ الآن جميع الأجيال تطوبني لأن القدير صنع بي عطائم واسمه قدوس ورحمته إلى جيل الأجيال للذين يتقونه صنع قوة بذراعه شتت المستكبرين بفكر قلوبهم أنزل الأعزاء عن الكراسي ورفع المتضعين أشبع الجياع خيرات وصرف الأغنياء فارغين عدد إسرائيل فتاه ليذكر رحمة كما كلم أباءنا لإبراهيم ونسله إلى الأبد فمكثت مريم عندها نحو ثلاثة أشهر ثم رجعت إلى بيتها إنجيل الرب So now we listen uh, and sing uh, listen as you wish or, or join in and sing the words of um, Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Good evening again from Bethlehem. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And also with you. The Virgin Mary is one of the most influential figures in our Christian tradition. Her example, her humility, her sacrificial obedience are all inspiring. Uh, yet sadly, we have also made her a controversial figure as some Christians turned her into a theological argument. Uh, while we Protestants may be uh, a right to uh, warn against the idolization of her figure in some Christian traditions, we are wrong if we take another extreme by ignoring her example and the powerful model she provides as a strong, faithful woman, a leader, and a mother. And today's text opens our eyes to an important aspect of Mary. While we often focus on her faith and obedience, uh, today we also encounter her deep understanding of the nature of God and how salvation history actually works. Today we are introduced to Mary the theologian, and it is my prayer that we allow her to teach us uh, through her wisdom and insight. But before we look at the song of Mary and the wisdom in these words, I would like to uh, maybe take us on a journey 2,000 years uh, ago and try to understand the context or settings when Mary made these words or sang these words. Um, we can summarize the times of Mary when uh, uh, she became pregnant, uh, when we, she received this calling uh, as follows. First of all, the land was then a place of turmoil. Her people were occupied and oppressed. The empire was strong and active. The people of the land of Palestine tried to revolt many times to become free, but they were always subdued. The empire was ruthless. That empire defined the reality people experienced. The land was also a place of strong religiosity. Religion was everything and everywhere. And there were always discussions about the right worship, the right tradition, uh, the right interpretation. And it was uh, assumed that if we get religion right, uh, we will be out of trouble. That was the assumption. The mentality of the law ruled their life. There was right and wrong. There was those who are clean and those who are unclean, pure and impure. This created an environment of religious pride, self-righteousness, and control of the other. The land was also a place of expectations. The people of the land were expecting that God will interfere with our world and make it a better place, that he would return to Jerusalem, as prophesied by Isaiah, and establish his kingdom a kingdom that will stand against all other kingdoms and empires. The Messiah will be here any time, they thought, and he will deliver his people and bring judgment against the enemies of the people of God. He will bring justice, he will bring peace. Now, I believe that Luke wrote his gospel to tell us that the time of waiting has come to, to an end. The time of waiting has come into an end. This is clear in the introduction to his gospel. The kingdom is here. God has visited us in Jesus. And today, uh, in today's words from Mary, they open our eyes into the nature of this kingdom and the nature of the God of this kingdom. Today, I want to ask a simple question. Who benefits from this divine visitation, according to the Virgin Mary. Who benefits, but also who is judged and challenged by this visitation. When we look at the text, we will discover that Mary's message is simple. The kingdom of God 
is good news to those who fear God, those of a humble estate, to the hungry, to all of them it's good news. But it is also bad news to the proud, to the mighty, and to the rich. Maybe we're not news, we're not used of thinking of the good news of the kingdom of God as bad news. But let's look at this. Maybe Mary drew this conclusion from her own example. God's visit to her became the paradigm through which Mary understood God and his dealing with humanity. Think of her example. She was a young woman. Well, typically God visits men. That's what we think. She was a young woman. She was a virgin. She was from Nazareth. She was probably poor. She was not from the most well-known family. She was not from the line of kings or even religious leaders. She was a nobody by the world's definition. But she, who maybe is considered a nobody, becomes one of the most important figures in our history. As such, she cries, my soul magnifies the Lord, my spirit rejoice in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. I love these words. He has looked at the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. Indeed, the whole Christmas narrative is full of such interesting choices. Choices we would not have made ourselves. Consider the timing. In the days of political turmoil, in the days of occupation, religious extremism, in days when ruthless baby killer, baby killing rulers and proud empire, we might think these are not the ideal times for the Son of God to be born and become one of us. But God thinks otherwise. Consider other elements of the narrative. Bethlehem, out of all towns and villages, a very small town back then, probably with few homes at most. Think of Nazareth, an average family from Nazareth, a family that later became refugee, which tells us they have no people to support them or back them. Jesus was born in a cave. Consider who told the good news, shepherds, maybe at the uh, lower class of of the, of the society back then. All of this should tell us something about the kingdom, the gospels as presenting to us as good news. What we have here is the radical reversal. God will turn the table upside down. God is here, but it is not like what we expected. Mary continues, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and the rich he has sent away empty. Those who put their trust in their might, those who put their trust in their richness, their own wisdom, and even their own religious traditions and self-righteousness, for all of them, the birth of Christ is actually bad news. She further says, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant and his mercy is for those who fear him. He has exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things. So to those who wait in hope, who put their trust in God, who humble themselves before God, the birth of Christ is actually good news. This is to me a liberating truth. This is liberating if we accept it, of course. It liberates us from the atheism of pride. It liberates us from our lust towards power. It liberates us from our dependence on our own merit and wealth. It helps us to find our worth in God, and that is liberating. Furthermore, we are reminded today that humility is a prerequisite to receiving the grace of God. It is indeed so that we can accept the gospel 
gospel as indeed good and liberating news. It is needed that we can accept the gospel as good news and liberating. This is why, by the way, for the poor, the gospel is good news. Why? Because the poor and indeed the oppressed, those who suffer from injustice, they realize that they need redemption. They realize that the world in its current structures needs redemption and correction. The poor do not need to be reminded that they should not put their security in things because they do not have things. They have no choice but to put their trust in God. Those who are suffering from injustice do not need to be reminded to put their trust in the just God because they have lost confidence in worldly powers. The poor, the oppressed, they are not threatened by a God who asks for total allegiance. And this is what we encounter in the songs, on the song of Mary. For he has looked into the humble estate of his servant. For Mary, this was good and liberating news. When we look at the Middle East today, when we look at Palestine today, we will realize that Mary's times is not actually are not much different than ours here in Palestine. We have the influence of an empire, we have an occupation, we have tension, we have despair, and we have actually also strong religiosity. We still have the same arguments that if we get religion right, things will be better. Or if we take matters into our own hands, things will be better. Our region today is a place of violence and extremism, a place where some people think that they are pleasing God by killing others, while others cry in pain, Lord, where are you? Here we have people who are expecting, waiting, and wondering when God will visit us. Can the gospel be good and liberating news today? For the people of Palestine or for anywhere in the world, in the UK or in Europe? The answer has to be yes. But if and only if we accept this eternal truth that God is looking for the humble heart, God is looking for meekness, for total dependence on him. Only when we accept the biblical truth that the kingdom of God is here, it has arrived, but it is a different kind of a kingdom. Mary teaches us today that the kingdom of God is for the marginalized, for the poor in spirit, for those in a humble estate. Today, we must reclaim this aspect of the kingdom, a kingdom for the meek and the humble, a kingdom for the poor in spirit, not the proud, those who mourn, not those who live in prosperity. The meek, not the powerful, not empire builders. Those who hunger and thirst for justice, not for money, comfort, power, or fame. The merciful, not the powerful or the ruthless. The pure in heart, the peacemakers, and those who are persecuted for justice states, justice sake. Jesus' way. His kingdom way, what Mary celebrates in her song, is radically different than that of empire or religion. Again, Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, those who are humble, empowered by truth and love, receive the gospel as good news. May this be true to all of us this evening. Amen. Back to you. Thank you, Munta. We're going to, to listen now as part of our reflection and response to the service to a version of the carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, sung by the church choir of, of uh, Munta's church.
what we want to do now is to give you an opportunity uh, a to meet one another just for a few minutes as fellow worshippers tonight and b to respond had to have a chance to respond together to to what we've been hearing and experiencing tonight uh, in five minutes we'll be back again and uh, we will have a, a carol and a time of prayer we will also be hearing from tony massar who is the principal of the um dar al kalima school in a few minutes time but for these next five minutes i'm going to put you into breakout rooms with an opportunity to to talk together about the things that have struck you florence we just before you do that um, Munt has given us a couple of questions and we will post them into the chats in the breakout rooms. Thank you. Here but go. the two questions are, do you believe that it matters where and when Jesus was born? So do you believe that it matters where and when Jesus was born? And the second question is, do you agree that the gospel can be bad news to some? Do you agree that the gospel can be bad news to someone? We'll put both those questions into the chat for those in the breakout rooms. Um, but those are the a couple of things that, as well as the um, the, the greetings to offer each other, um, Munt has posed to us this evening as the congregation. I'm just going to mute everybody. And uh, we're going to sing the carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And we will sing it to the, to the Bethlehem organ. Yeah, let's pray.
Thank you, and particular thanks to the organist uh, at the church. If you'll pass on our, our gratitude, Munta, uh, giving up an evening for, for our service this evening. We're going to... There he is. Thank you very much. If we could all give a wave. Thank you. Philip is going to be putting in the chat the, the link for donating to the Dar al Kalima School in Bethlehem. Our offering this evening is an offering that is going to be put towards their chapel fund. And to introduce that, um, we have Tony Massa with us, who is the principal uh, of the school, and he's going to speak to us now. Welcome, Tony, and thank you. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, our pleasure to meet you all on Zoom. Uh, God bless you all. Uh, I'm going to, in, in the beginning, I, I want to introduce myself. I am Anton Nassar. I'm the principal of Dar el Lutheran School in Bethlehem and the church elder here in the Christmas Lutheran Church. Uh, just I want to talk about our ministry at Dar el School. Is one of four KG to 12 Lutheran schools located in Bethlehem under the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land. The school was established in 1860 and we moved to its current location in 2000. We are a co-educational school with 418 students from both Muslims and Christian backgrounds. Our students come from villages, cities, and refugee camps near and far. Academically, we are proud to teach three languages and provide two streams for our students, scientific and literacy. And we hope to offer a third GCE stream in the future. We are teaching all math and science classes in English this year. And our students from KG to fifth grade are learning these subjects in English. This helps students shift to university studies of these subjects smoothly. Every day we have a morning devotion where we read scripture and sing Christian songs together. This helps to create a sense of unity, as unity is an important part of a school environment. We also proudly promote a Muslim-Christian dialogue program where students lear learn side by side about, about both Islam and Christianity. It's a, a strongly held school value that students learn about religions other than their own in order to foster a sense of tolerance and acceptance. Our school also is home to a peer mediation program which trained leaders to be experts in conflict resolution, which they are encouraged to utilize among their peers and music therapy sessions which help with behavior issue. Dar al Kalim also work to develop students' hobbies through extracurricular program or complementary program like sport, music, swimming, chess club, robotics team, MUN, and students' council. After high school, most of our students continue to study in the university. We hold an academic support, support program that works individually with students who are struggling academically. Dar al aims to create students to be leaders in the community, open-minded, respectful, intelligent, and to carry the values of the school, love, peace, faith, teamwork, 
belonging, hope, and justice. Though our students and staff face it, the everyday struggle of living under occupation, we work hard to create a learning environment that fosters hope and positive outlook, because our students will be the problem solvers of tomorrow and the future of our country. May God bless you and wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Tony, thank you so much. Uh, we will be praying for you as a school and as a staff and the work that you're doing there. And I would, I just want to encourage uh, those of, of us who are on the call from this this part of the world, um, as someone who's visited your school on several occasions, uh, that's been one of the highlights and, and one of the joys of, of, of coming over to Bethlehem is to be able to, to come to the school. And yes. I'd encourage anyone who's planning on a pilgrimage to Bethlehem to build that into the, to the pilgrimage. So, Tony, thank you. We're thank going you. to come to our prayers now. And um, what I'm going to do uh, for uh, a, a moment is to play the uh, Teze chant, O Lord, hear our prayer. And during, during, the, the, um, during that, that music, would you put into the chat, please, anything that you would like us to pray about tonight? and uh, let that be our prayer. So this is the opportunity to put into um, the, the chat any prayers for places and people. And then uh, Fee and I will lead us in some closing prayers for Bethlehem, for Munter, for, the, for Tony and the school there. And um, we'll sing our final carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. So let us pray together. We have been to Bethlehem tonight, O oh God, the place we have known since childhood, as we've sung well-known and well-loved carols with their images of peace, glory, wonder, and stillness. As we've given and received cards that bear colorful images of the manger, the shepherds, the angels, the holy family, the star, and the wise men. Yet we recognize only too clearly that it's still as it was at your birth a place of occupation, oppression, division, despair, a place where grief, hurt, humiliation and injustice kill kindness, shatter dreams and poison and maim souls. We recognise the powers that are ranged against your rule of justice, joy, peace and flourishing, frighteningly visible in the settlements, the separation wall, armed soldiers, long queues, 
we see just how effective they are in the absence of a realistic peace process, the fragmentation of Palestinian politics, the strength of the Israeli army, the mass exodus of Palestinians who are able to leave, the success of the anti-Palestinian religious and political narrative. We confess, O oh God, the complicity of our own churches, our own theologies, sometimes our own preaching and our own government in the daily misery of Bethlehem's people. The brutality, diminishment, injustice and oppression, the theft of land, peace and security, the choking off of joy and hope. Into this place we bring our prayers tonight. We listen for the spirit who calls us to love, compassion, steadfast faith, prophetic courage, and concrete action. We do not pray asking you to come again to Bethlehem. You came here at that first Christmas and you are here now, Jesus, Christ at the checkpoint. You are here despite the ugliness of iron bars. You are here despite the stares of uniformed guards. You are here despite the metal turnstiles, daily bruises, scarred psyches and broken hearts. We see you in the faces of workers desperate to reach their jobs. We see you in the crowded proximity of so many bodies, following a route designed to cause friction and fatigue. Your suffering looks out from the lowered eyes of women bringing their children to medical appointments or commuting to reach their workplaces. And so we pray for Palestinian and Jewish activists who hunger and thirst for your justice and true peace to prevail in Israel, Palestine and the occupied territories. We pray for the BDS campaign that it will bear the fruit it seeks. We pray blessing and protection on the ERP volunteers. We give thanks and pray for Tony and the staff at, of Dar al Kalima. We bless you for Munta and ask you to strengthen, encourage and keep him safe as he ministers in your name, stands for the truth of your kingdom, which is salvation for our world, and speaks on behalf of the Palestinian Christian Church and the people on the world stage. And for ourselves this Christmas time, we pray, invade our lives, occupy our hearts, break down every separation wall that shuts us off to the cries and sufferings of empire's victims. Fill us with your compassionate self-giving love until it overflows and drives and empowers us to make a Jesus-shaped difference to the lives and communities of which we are a part. We offer these and all our prayers, written, spoken, murmured, prayed silently in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so we sing our final carol together, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Oh, no. 
Thanks to the uh, URC Virtual Choir, Angela, Barbara, Carol, Dan, Dave, Debs, Jill, Judith, Kevin, Marion, Philip, Rachel, Sam, Simon and Rue who put it all together. Friends, uh, we've come to the end of our service. It's been a joy to be here. It's been a privilege, Munter, to have been able to to join you in Bethlehem, and we come to you now for our final blessing. Please uh, receive the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas uh, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you again, uh, Munta, and thank you to Tony and to all of you for, for giving up your time and, and giving so generously of your ministry tonight. May you be blessed as you've blessed us. Thank you. Have a blessed night and good evening, all. Good night. Thank, thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.